Hi everybody! So this week we've been talking about heroes and how there's lots of different kinds of heroes. And today I wanted to read you a story about a real life hero named Helen Frankenthaler. She was an artist and she lived in a time where there were a lot of rules around art. And they told people, and especially girls and women, that they could only paint a certain way. And Helen decided she was going to paint her own way and she was going to make her own rules. And so after the story, I'm going to show you her wet paint pour technique, and you can try it if you want. Dancing Through Fields of Color, The Story of Helen Frankenthaler by Elizabeth Brown, illustrations by Amy Securo. At a time when girls were taught to sit still, learn their manners and color inside the lines, Helen Frankenthaler colored her reds, blues, and yellows any which way she chose. When her mother called her to the dinner table, Helen continued painting watercolors of the sunset shining through the apartment window. At bedtime, Helen filled the sink with water. She dribbled in drops of ruby red nail polish and watched the color flow. When she let the water out, she loved to watch the color swirl into shapes. During summer vacations, Helen let the waves whoosh and whirl all around her, sailing her body through the tides. She kept circling, twisting, and floating, forever wrapped in the blue-green colors of the sea. While her older sisters were in school, Helen spent her days with her mother, who nurtured her dreams. Helen read and wrote stories, made collages, and created designs with glass beads, circles, hearts, and stars in brilliant colors. She painted pictures and cards for birthdays and anniversaries, filled with all the colors of happiness purple, yellow, and pink. Helen's father worked long days as a judge. She couldn't wait for him to come home each day. He took her wherever she wanted to go. Most of all, Helen loved taking walks with her family in Central Park. She ran under the welcoming sky, twirling, waltzing, leaping across the lush green fields and playing hide and seek among the flowering trees. When it was time to go, Helen took the colored chalk she had stuffed in her coat pockets and drew lines from the front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art through the park, around the corners and through the crowds, across the street, all the way home. The colorful line connected the two things she loved most. Helen's parents encouraged her to blossom, express herself, paint free. In art class, Helen wanted to do things her way but she had to follow the rules in order to pass. Helen pleased her teachers when she sketched figures, drew chairs, and painted flowers in pairs like all the other students, but she wished for something different. Helen found comfort in painting seascapes. The blues and greens reminded her of summer days with her family at the beach. She made pictures of her trips to the country with bursts of orange gold paint that warmed her face like the sun. Helen followed the rules well enough to succeed in school and go to college to study painting. Helen loved college, but longed to paint what she felt inside. Painting feelings couldn't be contained in black lines or organized into clear shapes or objects. Helen dreamed of setting her colors free like she was as a child. She searched for more. After college, Helen moved back to New York City where many artists were exploring forms, lines, and shapes differently. She overlapped color and painted larger and larger pictures. Helen met an artist named Jackson Pollock whose paintings hung in museums and galleries. The art would call him the greatest living painter in the United States. When Helen saw his work, she marveled at how he splattered and dripped his paints on canvas tacked to the studio floor. If he broke the rules, why couldn't she? Helen exhibited her art in small shows while male painters were given larger exhibits. Critics called Helen's work too sweet in color, too lyrical, too ladylike. She worked longer and harder at her paintings, drawing strength from her memories of the country and sea. She wanted to leap into her colors, feel the colors and be the colors. Art never let her down. Helen laid a huge canvas on the floor. She put down her brush Helen blended red and yellow to make orange. Blues and yellows became greens. She mixed and mixed and mixed rainbows. Helen swirled charcoal lines across her canvas. 
With a fistful of pink, Helen turned her wrist outward and spread the paint, streaming, streams of color racing and spiraling, the paint soaking in the canvas, the rain seeping into soil. Helen grabbed a bucket of crimson and poured, setting her colors free. They ran and rushed. The colors turned into memories. Helen imagined mountain peaks. She remembered the sea's waves. And with a sweep of her arm, she splashed green like sea foam. Colors jumped across the painting, merging, connecting like rivers and oceans, colors into feelings. Wherever the paint landed was the perfect place to be. Grabbing a nearby mop, Helen promenaded through puddles and pools of paints, pushing and pulling her colors together. Oranges and reds danced, corals pirouetted, pinks plied, yellows and blues sashayed, winding, turning, spinning. When she was done, Helen danced into the field, free among all the shimmering colors of her life, extending, reaching beyond the painting into forever. I hope you liked the story of Helen Frankenthaler. Today, I thought we could try her paint pour art technique. So for this, you're gonna need a piece of paper, a pretty thick paper, uh, and you're gonna get it wet to start with. Get it wet and then let the extra water drip off. I used watercolor paper because it's nice and thick. And then you're gonna need a space to work. This is a little messy, so it's a good outside project. You're going to need some liquid watercolors. I just used regular tempera paint and mixed it with a little water to make my watercolors. And then you're just going to experiment. If you want, you can use a sponge or something to help move around the paint. And you're going to pour and see what happens. You ready? So Helen was all about movement in her art. So if you want, you can move your paper around a little bit. See how the colors move and swirl. I loved that part of the story where she's pouring the nail polish down the drain and watching it swirl. So I'm gonna see if I can get some swirls and see what happens when your colors mix together. Helen was all about not following the rules and trying different things. So just let yourself experiment. Oh my gosh! Look at those colors mixed together to make green. I'm gonna try adding a little bit of red and see what happens. Maybe some red over here. And if it's hard to just pour a little bit, you could try using a dropper. That may make it easier. Look at them swirl like that. Woo! So cool. Maybe I'll add some more blue. And don't worry about using too much paint. You can get it as wet as you want. Maybe I'll try my little sponge. Whoop. Sponge there. It's so colorful. Look, I'm going to let some of it drip off. Maybe I'll drip this way so you can see. Ooh, look what happens when I turn it. I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna see what it looks like when it's dry. We would love to see your pictures if you try this technique.